Hey, this is a multi-part series and I have linked part number one in the video description down below. Oh, and if you want to follow along, you go to procurementzen.com slash digital where you can download the resources, chat with fellow students. And by the way, it's completely free. So let's start with video. In this lesson, I introduce you to a powerful concept in NIME, filters. This part one of the filter note lessons will cover row filters and they are quite powerful. We will discover how to dynamically create a filter so we can further prepare our table for further automation. If you remember the last lesson, you might remember that our imported Excel spreadsheet file, which we integrated into NIME, also had a totals row. Of course, we want to exclude that from our NIME data table. But how do we do that? The problem is such a totals row is usually highly dynamic. In our case, we have a totals row after a thousand line items, but it could also be after 500 line items in the next month or after 800 line items in the months thereafter or anything in between. So we cannot tell NIME to delete a specific row because this will change from month to month and from report to report. But filters can help us here. They are very versatile and in this part one of the filters lessons we will use the row filter node to dynamically exclude the data, the results row or the totals row from our data table. Open NIME and have a look at our workflow. You can also find it attached as a resource to this lesson. So please make sure that you have either followed the last lesson or you have downloaded it from this lesson's resource file. Let's quickly switch to the screen view. This time we will approach the row filter node we want to use in a slightly different way from the node repository. Delete this search term and drop down the manipulation category because this is what we want to do. We want to manipulate rows. So we also drop down the row subcategory and within that the filter subcategory. So now we have all row relevant filters so to say. And the one we're looking for is this little body here called row filter. Click it with your left mouse button, hold the left mouse button clicked and drag and drop it over to the canvas. Now drag a line from the output port of the Excel reader to the input port of the row filter node. Before we dive deeper, let's take a step back. NIME works best when it's based on rules. So let's quickly have a look at the file table from the Excel reader node once again. Right click the Excel reader node and select file table. Scroll to the bottom of the table and now let's see, can we identify any rules here for the row we want to exclude? What about this? There is a vendor in every single row except for the row that we want to exclude. So a potential rule could be if the vendor field in a row is empty, delete that row. Okay, let's try it with this approach. Close the file table again. Time for configuration. Select the row filter we just dragged onto the canvas and press F6 on your keyboard. This opens up the configuration window of the row filter node. Let's have a quick look on how this configuration is structured. This approach here is quite common in NIME. On the left you can see three different sets of criteria you can use for filtering. The first one is basically rule based. The second one is by row numbers. For example, everything greater than 500. And the third one is by row IDs, IDs, which is different than a row number. For example, we could say every even row ID or every row ID less than 10. We need option one. Now each category has an include option and an exclude option. As we want to delete stuff, we choose the exclude rows by attribute value. 
Now we have to define the rule. If you remember, we said we don't want to have rows that have any that have nothing in the vendors column. So we select vendor from the column to test drop down. If you remember, if there is nothing in a column, name shows a red question mark. This is also known as missing value. So we choose the last option here, only missing values match. So our rule now basically says exclude everything from the result of this automation step that has missing values in the vendor column, which in our case is only the totals row. Click OK to close the configuration window. With the row filter node still selected, press F2 to adjust its label. So basically what it does is it deletes the totals row. Shorten that by del totals row. Click outside the node to leave the text edit mode. All right, now time to execute. Press Shift F7 on your keyboard, Shift and F7 at the same time to execute all executable nodes, which is in our case only the row filter node. And we're done. Right clicking on the row filter node and selecting filtered will show us the results table. Let's quickly scroll to the bottom and we recognize a totals row is gone, exactly as we wanted it. So now you know already the E and the T of the ETL abbreviation. If you remember, E stands for extract, and that's basically what we did. And the last one extracted stuff from our ERP system and also loaded into our NIME um, application. And T stands for transform, and transformation of the overall table is what we did in this lesson. Now you can apply all kinds of filters. This is only limited by your imagination. So when you, whenever you discover a rule based on rows, so anything that you can apply to rows basically, the row filter node is your new best friend. If you have any questions regarding the row filter node, please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, we will see each other in the next lesson. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.